Hey guys, it's Russell from uh, IDK How To. So this is the channel where uh, I'm just gonna be doing a bunch of things that I find kind of interesting, um, largely techy, computer related, and uh, I'm just gonna go for it and see how it goes. Um, so today, what I'm gonna be doing is um, overclocking my GPU. So now it's not like a desktop where it's you know you overclock it and it can cool itself and stuff like that. I'm actually overclocking my notebook GPU, which I know isn't really recommended. Um, but on average it runs between 83 and 85 degrees, so I still get like a 5 degree uh, playroom there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so I was doing a little, uh, like a little bit of my research, and what I found out is there are a few utilities that I can use uh, to, uh, to, to give it that overclock. So, um, we've got like EVGA Precision, um, Gigabytes OC Guru, and MSI Afterburner, um, those are pretty much uh, more of the popular uh, NVIDIA overclocking utilities. Um, and then for AMD we have uh, Sapphire Trix or Tri Double X, um, or uh, AMD Overdrive. Um, so all you people with the with the Radeon cards uh, in your notebooks or uh, towers, then uh, then you can use those. Um, so yeah, so the first step, uh, I kind of skipped it just for the uh, purpose of uh, time. Um, but you have to uh, go to your web browser and download the um, the uh, overclocking utilities. So I actually decided to go with um, MSI Afterburner. Um, it was the most popular. It gave the most stable overclock. So uh, that's sort of what I decided to go with. Um, plus, like it's just it's really cool to to read all this stuff, and the reds are pretty awesome. Um, so, anyways, uh, so when you if you Google MSI Afterburner, then you can find it. It'll be at the home page. You can go through tutorials, and it'll show you how to use it and all that kind of stuff. Um, or you can just go right to the downloads page. So, uh, what you can do, you can choose the um, the utility for your uh, PC, which is what I downloaded. Uh, you can also download a, a benchmarking and monitoring software, which is MSI Combustor, um, as well as uh, some remote applications. So, like, you can install these on your phone, and then you can adjust your overclock from your phone. Um, so it's like while you're in game or something like that. If you're not running dual monitors, which I am, so if you see me looking this way and then that way, that's the that's the dual monitors kicking in. So, so you download it and install it. I downloaded Combustor as well, um, just to uh, monitor the GPU. Uh, so yeah, so um, after you start up MSI Afterburner, this is uh, this is what's going on. Uh, so right now you can see the numbers are sort of uh, switching back and forth between 205 or whatever that was uh, GPU clock and a 475 memory clock. So what that is is just it's two separate. There we go. So 270 and 405 is the low power state. So when my computer decides it doesn't need all that horsepower, it switches to a lower power state to help conserve battery. Now this is a super key feature when you're not gaming or something like that. Um, I think that comes standard in most uh, notebook uh, graphics cards. Um, so you can see here, uh, uh, a lot of the, the overclocking settings are actually uh, turned off. So the core voltage, power limit, temp limit, all that kind of stuff. Um, these will open up if you have a, uh, a desktop graphics card um, that you're, that you're going to be working on. Um, so yeah, so there it's got explanations that pop up and stuff. Cool. Um, so yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so moving right to the uh, to the overclock stage, uh, what you want is you also want like a benchmarker to uh, to help um, sort of gauge whether your overclock is stable or not. So um, I went to Uni Engine um, and downloaded their Heaven uh, or benchmarking software. They also have uh, their Valley and a couple of other ones, but I just I like the luck of Heaven. Um, it seemed to be a pretty popular one, fairly demanding. So um, I figured, shit, that just all right. Um, we're just going to find it. I forgot to install shortcuts when I installed the Uni Engine Heaven software. So, yeah. Uh, so, at this time, actually, I'm also going to hit the Start uh, menu and look for Combustor. So Combustor, it's got a couple of benchmarking and uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I'm actually going to use it for is a, a more detailed GPU monitoring after um, 
after everything because it, it shows sorry before I drag it over the other monitor it shows the uh, the current power state it's in the voltage draw um, whether it's actually being throttled which is huge because that's that's a big deal um, how much memory I'm using and all that other good stuff um, it actually shows that I'm also running uh, HD graphics 4000 the, the Intel but uh, it's it's integrated so it doesn't really measure anything like that so yeah move that over the other monitor. Alright, so MSI Combustor. Now I'm not going to use any of the stress tests or benchmarks because, I don't know, it's just the, the Uni Engine was a lot better. So I can just, I can close Combustor now and uh, get rid of that. Alright, so looking at the uh, MSI Afterburner, I'm just going to detach this. Now these are detailed graphs looking at um, a bunch of things. So this is your GPU temperature, um, GPU usage, uh, they've also got like memory usage, core clock, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's all here. Um, so the, like the CPU 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, um, those are your threads, I believe. So two threads for four cores, it's just eight um, or something like that. Uh, not entirely sure, but that's okay. Um, all of these numbers, that's okay. You don't really have to look at all of them. The only one that you're going to be looking at is either on MSI Afterburner, which is your GPU, um, or the uh, combustor detail, which I moved over to the uh, to the other monitor. Yeah, there we go. So then you're gonna be looking at this one. This is the uh, the one that we're looking for because the CPU actually won't be used to its full potential when we reach the overclock. All right, so uh, I'm actually not gonna be really using that, so I can just attach that back there. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna try first of all is uh, a couple people on a bunch of forums just crank the over the core clock to max. So I'm going to do that first and see how that goes. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? No, we're just gonna we're gonna reset it and we're going to run this on low to not stress it a whole lot. Um, move that over, run this, and uh, let's see how it goes. All right, so uh, the benchmark went through. Um, unfortunately, my screen capture actually doesn't work, or didn't work while it was benchmarking, so I couldn't really show you the scenes, but you can find that. Um, I'll see if I can like uh, link the, the actual benchmark scene uh, into the uh, video. Um, kind of cool, like it's not really anything super interesting, but whatever. Anyways, um, so here's our scores. Um, we're looking at an average of 23.6 frames per second on low and a benchmark score of 595. Um, so this was the, the base stock clock speeds. Um, and uh, yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, bring Afterburner back over. Um, and then uh, I've already set it to plus 100. So we're going to uh, confirm that. I've already confirmed that. We're going to move it back over, um, and then we're going to uh, run this again uh, and see how it goes, make sure it's stable. And uh, if it is, then we can bump it up to 200 and see how the scores compare and all that kind of stuff. All right, so uh, let's see how we do. All right, and we're back. So um, these are the most recent uh, benchmark scores. We'll look at an average frames per second of 25.4, um, which leads to a benchmark score of 640, um, with a min FPS of 10.8, max of 41.4. So um, as a reminder, the first benchmark scores are right here. So the average FPS is 23.6, average score is 595, min FPS 9.3, and max FPS 37.9. So a uh, little bit of an improvement. We got about two frames per second or so. Um, and that was uh, uh, from clocking um, from 100 hertz to 200 hertz on the memory clock. Or, or sorry, from 0 to 100 hertz on the memory clock. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, hit it up at uh, 200 uh, megahertz now and uh, and see how it goes. All right, so we're just going to uh, minimize that and that. And we're going to run this and see how it turns out. All right, and we're back again. All right, so after a third test, um, it does reveal that our overclock actually helped again. Um, so this is our most recent overclock. Uh, FPS or yeah, average FPS is 26.8. Score seven or 676. Sorry, 
and this is our last score, uh, 25.4, 640, uh, and that. So our second test did have a lower or higher min FPS and a higher max FPS, but the overall average was lower, so the score was lower, although not quite a bigger spread. This is about 45, and this one's about 36 or so, so we're narrowing that gap. Um, so what I kind of want to try now is, um, I may have closed Afterburner, and so if we open that up again, um, let's try another increment of 250, or a final value of 250. Let's see how this goes. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that'll be our next test, and uh, we'll see how this runs. All right, so um, after running the 250 megahertz clock test, uh, the benchmark software actually crashed. Um, it was on like scene 12 or 13 or so, so it was about halfway through. Um, <clears throat> but the plans didn't make it through, so the overclock was unstable. So we just backed it off to the to the highest overclock that we know that works, and that was the 200 megahertz. Now, I don't want to push it to 225, because the 250 was actually running really, really hot. Um, it hit that 90 degree throttle mark pretty quickly. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna back, I'm gonna back it off to 200. It's good enough for me, uh, and I will use it like that. Um, so yeah, so a couple of things just to wrap it up is if we take a look at all of our benchmark scores, we started with uh, 23.6 FPS and we moved up to 26.8 so it's only an increase of 3.8 or 3.6 sorry frames per second um, but that may translate into more frames if you're playing like a less demanding game um, so yeah so that's what we're looking at guys um, just so you know all the tests were run from about 64 degrees so I waited until the GPU cooled off um, <clears throat> so the test was fair for each run um, the throttle mark was 90 degrees so it would only hit a maximum of I think 93 degrees and then it backed it way off um, that last test it actually hit 94 degrees and then clocked everything way back um, to actually below its power saving state so that's why we're, we're uh, sort of pulling the reins back a little bit. Um, so yeah, that uh, that seems to be the end of it. So here is our stable overclock. We're core clock speed plus 135, memory clock speed plus 200, and we're getting some pretty decent frame rates on heaven. On low, mind you. Again, it's not a fantastic card, but this is, uh, this is about working with what you got. <laughs> so yeah, um, thanks for watching, guys. Like it if you liked it. Dislike if you didn't. If you have any comments or questions, then leave them below. And, um, yeah, so now we know how to. Um, thanks, guys, and see you later.